Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Magical Miracle Network. My name is Ruth Perkinson, and I can't even believe who I have here with me today. I am so really incredibly honored. I'm almost breathless because I'm so honored to have this beautiful priestess with me today. Her name is Hallie Lifson. Her, again, write that down, everybody. Her name is Hallie Lifson, and she is local to Richmond, Virginia, and she is a priestess, and I'm so happy she's here with us today. So Hallie, just say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. So happy to be here and have a wonderful, light-filled conversation with my really good friend, Ruth. She has opened up so much for so many, and I'm so thrilled about this new project so that she can reach more and more people. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, Hallie. We really do. We have no idea how it's going to work. We have no idea how the resources are going to come in, but we know that th there is an intention here to bring forth uh, the message of love and the mm -hmm. message of sharing and the mm -hmm. message of upliftment and the message mm -hmm. of light to all beings, whether they be a teeny itty bitty baby or they're a teenager or they're a young adult or they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s and beyond. We know that the wisdom we have in this magical miracle network we know that the wisdom we have here can touch many different beings and so i've asked you to come on today to talk a little bit about your story about how you became a priestess and i think you were telling me a little bit before that it was like a little bit in your ear mary magdalene said something in your ear is that right yeah well first i just want to say that when you were talking about what you're creating i have a body prayer that I find really brings what we're all doing home. Can I share it with you? Absolutely, absolutely. This is your, go for it, okay. yes. So I work um, with the chakras and I found that when I, I had a Kundalini awakening when I was 15. So I'm very much about how the soul speaks through the body. And so what you are creating, this is what came to me when you were talking. I start with the root chakra and that's the I, the I, the I am. And we're always connected down into mother Gaia. We are constantly supported energetically. So moving up through the system, it's I am becoming, creating love, expressing vision for spirit. So that's what you are doing wow. and what we are all doing. Yes. Together. Yes. It reminds me of Buddha, Buddha under the Bodhi tree, right? He was just like sitting there behind underneath the Bodhi tree, right? Just kind of really getting that um, energy from Gaia, right? And having it come up and having it manifest in the way that was right and good for the Holy Spirit, for the, for spirit, not for the ego, but for spirit, right, Hallie? Right. It's all for the spirit. And yeah. I think that is the thing that really hit me with Mary Magdalene's lost gospel. It was so elegantly simple and not easy. And she identified the seven aspects of the ego, which we are designed with. You know, we do so much to like try and deny, deny it, you know, and it, it's how we're designed. So when the ego pops up, we can see it as an opportunity, right? To come back into alignment with love. Right. And I, there was something so liberating about that. There was no sin. Literally, she spelled, this is why it was hidden in the desert for 2000 years, <laughs> because it's so potent and it puts you in the driver's seat. You don't need an intermediary because we are perfectly divine and we are perfectly human. And that human part of ourselves, that egoic consciousness is a part of who we are. We just cannot give it the keys to the car. <laughs> it's like giving a right, toddler right. the keys to the car. Right. It, yeah. You never want to miscreate. You never want to miscreate. Exactly. I get you. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I was, um, one of my, one of my favorite things to do, Ruth, is to take people around our beautiful, beautiful earth to the really magical spots where the ley lines come to, together with big vortices of energy that we all just, we feel it. It's magic. There's been so many people that have held ceremony in these spots for thousands and thousands and thousands of years that we feel it. So I was in a catamaran and Piraeus outside of Athens. And we were about to, to go through the Peloponnese with a group. And I woke up, I often get messages in my dreams in the morning, usually before I wake up. And this one day through my left ear, it was so, um, it was not soft. It was not sweet. It was decidedly feminine. And it said, reclaim your spiritual sovereignty. Oh, wow, Hallie, say that one more time. Really, say it two more times because I really think people really need to hear this message. Say it two more times. <laughs> reclaim your spiritual sovereignty. These were not words that I, that I, that I, little I, Hallie used. I wasn't, you know, using the term sovereignty. I had just discovered before I went to Greece that there even was a lost gospel of Mary's. So come to find out, I jumped up out of this little tiny bed in my, in my catamaran and, and wrote it all down because it was, it was not a suggestion, Ruth. It was a command. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no, it I, wasn't just like hey it was more no. like hey you might want to write this down because it was more like it sounds to me like it was very authoritative very authoritative right well think about the kind of woman that mary would have had to have been honestly to be strong enough to stay with her beloved no one talks about what that took to know that he was sacrificing himself to anoint him with the oils and then to sit with his mother and look him in the eye for the hours and hours and hours, Ruth, when he was on the cross. This is a very strong woman. She was educated, which was not the norm, clearly. She was, not only was she literate, but she was trained in the temples of Isis, as was Mary the mother. Mari, Mary, actually means priestess. This was a highly trained priestess. And Yeshua was working with Mary. In fact, there were no healings that are in the Bible that took place without Mary Magdalene there. Just wow. Sit, I mean, whoa. Sit with that for a minute. And think I mean, about I'm how like. I've got, I'm, I'm going to get chills. They're not here yet, but my God, that's amazing. That's amazing. We, information. Designed, we are never designed to do it alone. Even within our own energetic systems, we find the balance between masculine, divine masculine and divine feminine as within. So without Yeshua always had Mary and Mary was helping him to juice up his spirit body his they called it the ka in egypt and they worked together with the kundalini energy to strengthen his spiritual body so that he could do what he did wow they this did is this is amazing hallie i mean this is information that has been hidden for so long and you yeah. have this information and i think you're Part of your mission in your life is to bring this forward, right? Is to bring all of this forward. Can we stop there and just sort of take a segue into the big adventure you're taking this in, into this fall and then into the springtime? I really want people to hear about this because we're trying to keep these um, transmissions to about 20 minutes. So can you can you kind of oh. can we into that? Ah, I'll try. Uh, let's see. So I I hold a temple space. Um, 
And this will be my second year holding the Temple Space. And I'm so excited that you're going to be a part, Ruth. Um, temple Space is very different than a typical women's circle. And I love women's circles. We're in women's circles together, Ruth. So you know how nourishing they can be. And then they are. And I love all of my sisters in those circles. But Temple Space is different. In Temple Space, we are not coming from the ego consciousness because temple is designed to be, there's a gate where you're confronted with a question and you have to go deep down into your inner womb of knowing to answer that question. And what it does is it shocks the ego and you drop your egoic consciousness at the temple gate. And when you walk into temple, you have connected to your soul level knowing. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I hope you've got this. Can you write a book about this? We would really like a book on all this, or maybe even a chat book would be nice. So <laughs> I, I have I, the beginnings of a book. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be 108 pages. I have it in my mind. Um, I just, you know, I have lots of projects with all the travel, but so well, when, the, we come, when we get you to come back on, hopefully you can come back on maybe once a month or so, once every two months, I'd really like you to talk more about um, all of that and then how we can get that book. Okay, so yeah. go right ahead. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah. So the seven months together, they're really for those sisters who are interested in a more in-depth consciousness exploration. So we're not sitting around giving podcast recommendations or even book recommendations. And when you share from this womb of silence in the, in the temple, um, you are witnessed. Every single sister in there has learned how to be a sacred witness for you. We are not jumping in to save you because you don't need saving. You are perfectly whole and complete. That's amazing. And I think at the end of the uh, of this adventure, you guys are going to go to Glastonbury and then to the south of France. Is that correct? Yeah. So we are at the end of each seven month temple, we'll be taking a, a pilgrimage. This year, I decided to make it all female to go to Glastonbury for um, they're just all about the goddess. there, gotcha. <laughs> And so I thought that would be really fun. But that is also where Mary um, escaped from the Romans, she came into the south of France and then was brought back up into through the mists of Avalon. If you've ever read that book, um, and so she taught the way of love. Yeah. And, and 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 I can I jump in right there and just say that's exactly what this whole global network is about. This magical miracle network is to teach only love. For yes. that is what you are. It is the way of love. It is the way of forgiveness. It is the way of sharing wisdom. It is the way. That is the way, right? So, way. so anyway, we're running a little bit out of time. So I, what I'd like to do, did you want to say one more thing there before we switch over to something else? Was there one more thing you wanted to say? Um. Well, just that Um. if you were at all called to go back to Glastonbury, it is the heart chakra of Mother Gaia. It is, um, it has the white spring, the red spring, the divine masculine, the divine feminine. It's where Mary taught about the chakra system. It's where Mary healed in those sacred waters. It's where Mary sat in the apple orchard herself and meditated. And so we're going to go to all of those places and wow. to the cave where Mary meditated in St. Balm each day where she connected to Yeshua. So Yeshua went on beyond the veil and Mary was the body, just like the divine feminine is embodied wisdom, embodied spirit. And so she carried out and taught the way of love. And she's still doing that as is he. Yes. Together. Yes. Oh my gosh, Hallie, you are like this arsenal bastion of information. You are, you really are a priestess. You really are a goddess. And 
And I really appreciate your willingness to show up even today to do this um, interview with me. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. It's my pleasure. It's really lovely. Do you want to talk about the course at all? <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, I would like to do, if you wouldn't mind, since you are a priestess, I would like for you because everybody pretty much knows I'm half blind. And what I'm asking people to do is to read a beautiful passage, keep it short. And then um, I'm going to ask for um, Hallie to pray for Gaia, the animals, the plants, all the humans, our star system and beyond. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and read that beautiful okay. passage from A Course in Miracles. I am going to read that passage, but because of what you just said, I, I feel that I want to speak into that. Thousands and thousands of years ago, we had priestesses blessing the water at every sacred well on Mother Gaia throughout the entire planet. Thousands of years ago, we had priestesses who were highly trained to give transmissions, to be oracles, to hold sacred space, and to heal. And that was systematically taken out of organized religion. It is our time to reclaim the priestess, and it's a fundamental part of healing Mother Gaia. The priestesses are back. There are 80,000 yes. of us. Yes. 80, <laughs> of us. And, and Hallie, just as a little bit of a joke, I've got some masculine energy in me because I, you know, I'm a lesbian and I'm married to okay. Heather and everything. So I'm still invited, even though I got a little testosterone. Is that okay? Oh, uh, hey, I've got tons. Of, my divine masculine is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so girl. Funny. My Go divine ahead, feminine is a warrior and my divine masculine is like the steady <laughs> Space. So yeah, I feel <laughs> you. Everybody's always welcome because we all have those energies within. Yes. It's the Ida and the Pingala that goes up. Go. Yeah. Right? All okay, right, girl. So read that gonna, passage. Here we go. I'm just gonna read the one that I opened up to this morning. I don't know if it's it's not like my favorite, it's just what I opened up to. Guiltlessness and invulnerability. So how does organized religion keep us in our place through making us feel like we are constantly guilty? <laughs> Guiltlessness and invulnerability. Earlier, I said that the Holy Spirit shares the goal of all good teachers whose ultimate aim is to make themselves unnecessary by teaching their pupils all they know. The Holy Spirit wants only this for sharing the Father's love for his Son. He seeks to remove all guilt from his mind that he, she may remember his mother, father, birther in peace. Peace and guilt are antithetical and the mother, father, birther can be remembered only in peace. Love and guilt cannot coexist. And to accept one is to deny the other. Guilt hides Christos from your sight. For it is the denial of the blamelessness of God's son. When I read that, because because I am about the reclamation of the divine feminine. I am about embodying spirit. What I know as a priestess and an occupational therapist is mechanistically, Ruth, we can only be in two states. We can either be puckered in fight, flight, or freeze, right? Or we can be relaxed and in love, in the vibrational frequency of love. Absolutely, Helen. That's beautiful. And that well, there Helen. is no mixing the two. You cannot right. be in one and this at the same time. Right. And every moment we choose and the lowest hanging fruit, Ruth, to help us get to the parasympathetic state 
is our breath. Right. And thank God we've got Melissa McLaughlin, who's our in-house expert on breath work, and you too, to help us yes. with some breath work as well. I'm yes. super excited, um, Hallie. Um, so let's just say a quick prayer, if you don't mind, for Earth, Mother Earth, yes. um, and then we'll go ahead and close out. Okay. Mother Gaia, Mother Gaia, you give us all the nourishment that we require in this earth. You give us the air that provides us with our intellect, our imagination. You give us fire that helps us with our creativity, keeps us warm, burns away what no longer serves. You provide us with your sacred, sacred waters that purify our hearts and souls. You give us the mountains, the earth itself that nourishes us and grounds us constantly and gives us everything we need. May we remember you. May we honor you. May we remember how much you love us so that we may come back into the frequency of love and respect you. We have rent asunder the divine feminine. Mother Gaia, it is time to remember you and honor you. May it be so. May it be so. May it be so. May it be so. Hallie, you are, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are an amazing priestess. You're an amazing goddess. I am absolutely honored and grateful that you are here. We know we're in the fifth dimension. We know that we are <laughs> all the way up in that fifth dimension and even beyond that. We are in unity awareness. That's what I call it. We are all waking up from what I call the terrible, awful dream of separation into the happy dream of unity and innocence and love. And we need the energy of Yeshua. We need the energy of Mary Magdalene. We need the energy of all beings to come together and to have fun and be free and be, to be happy. So to be embodied. Yes, so to be together. embodied, exactly. Remember, embodied. this is heaven, Ruth. This We're is creating it. <laughs> Gaia and God are one. Gaia and God are one. Gaia and God are one. All right, girl, I got to go. I love okay. you so much. Can I we have you back on the show? Back. Huh? I want to come back again. All right. Well, let's cut, let's get you get you back. How about in one month? Can you come back in one month? Sure. When I get back from Santorini and Switzerland and the Loire Valley in France, I all will. Right. I would love to tell you all about it. All right. You're coming back on. Just just ping me and let me know. All okay. to our viewers out there, please share this information. Please share Hallie's information. Please give it to beings you know who need this. And we love you so much. You guys, please oh, pray oh. for my eyes. And I'm going to try and stop the recording here. So give me one moment. Hallie, I love you. God bless you. I love you too. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you.